Uh, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Sliders Podcast, your favorite podcast this side of the hemisphere. And I am your host, Tom, and we are joined by Erica. Okay, um, as you can see, it's just me here today. Um, Taf was deported to Zimbabwe. <laughs> Um, Toby was deported back to Nigeria, even though he might say he's Irish, he wasn't born there. And Mo, again, he's fulfill- he's fulfilling his conservative duties, so yeah, he can't be here. You know, he's helping out Mr. Boris Johnson and that. So either, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what to call- I have Erica here today to talk about. What did you want me to talk about? The Fashion Society. The Fashion Society at Newcastle <laughs> University. Yeah. Um, she is the president of the Fashion Society. Um, first of all, can you tell me about why you want to become president of the Fashion Society? Um, well, I was part of like the in first year I was like doing the show. I literally had like such a minor role, it was like front stage team, so I just did like little bits here and there, like basically mm-hmm. like odd job kind of things on the day. And the show was just so cool and, like, it was so amazing to, like, be part of something like that. Like, even though I did, like, such a small thing. So I was like, yeah, I really want to, like, be part of the society. Um, So I applied to be on the society next year. And I was fashion outreach, which was so sick. Like, I really loved it. All I did was, like, I was, like, building relationships with brands and, like, organisations. And it was really fun. And we, like... We were like working towards the show at the end of the year again and that was really cool and like it was a really good experience like um i feel like i got industry experience even though it was like a university okay. society um and then i applied for president the next year which is the year i am in now right. so um, yeah what does the fashion society do like um so it's we've got like a few main pillars so we've got um modeling photography and sewing and those are the kind of things we want to teach people and like build their skills in but um we also do like socials and stuff obviously um but we have a lot of workshops for like sewing and like modeling photography and like we try and collaborate with other societies and like do things and we try and get opportunities like in the industry for people like um like maybe with like modeling agencies or like writing for magazines and stuff we also do blogging as well maybe there's four pillars yeah, that doesn't look good if I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, blogging's really important as well. Um, and we also work towards the show at the end of the year, which I think is like really good because you just gain so much experience from organising such a big event and like also... Um, you know, like also like... Oh, fuck. I just... Ha- my mind's just gone blank. But also <laughs> like... Um, like because it's not just within this university it's like within the fashion industry as well so we kind of reach out yeah. we, it kind of builds a bridge for people i would say like because at, at newcastle uni we don't have like a fashion course or anything mm-hmm. so it's kind of like i feel like the society is such a good opportunity for people to get like kind of it's kind of like a stepping stone for people to go into like the fashion world i guess mm-hmm. like that's kind of what it was for me Okay, so is it like, does everyone get a role when it comes to these big like events or showcases? Um, so in the committee, we have different people in charge of different things. Um, but as a member, you can kind of do what you want to do. Like you can um, do modeling if you like, you can try photography, you can try whatever. You can. We have like a marketing team and stuff. Okay. You can do that if you want to. Um, and like sewing, you could like learn like to fashion design and stuff. Um, but yeah, we welcome like any level of experience and stuff like it's just kind of given people the chance to try different things okay so everyone pretty much has a chance to um get some industry experience yeah that's pretty cool okay um i'm actually gonna ask you um do you have like specified designers for your showcases or like does anyone is anyone's work um showcased like Um, how do you go what's the deciding process pretty much with what clothes are being showcased at the shows? Yeah, so we usually have, for well, every year, we had um, our own collection. So, like, the sewers create it, like, they design it and create it. This mm. year, the the collection is so nice. Like, when I saw it, I was just, like, I don't know, it was so nice. It made me emotional because, like, it was just really good. Um, and then for the rest of the brands, it's up to the designer outreach to, like, contact different brands and kind of find brands that will suit our theme um, and then just try and get them to work with us. Um, 
and yeah so it's just it's kind of what the designer outreach wants to look for and like what the theme of the show is and stuff yeah have you made any pieces since um no i actually i did sew something actually i did sew something that was really fun yeah so i got to use a sewing machine um but yeah it was just literally one straight line but it's in the show now (laughs) wait do you have a picture of it or no um (laughs) yes uh, you know, I'll just put it up on the screen <laughs> later, later, <laughs> into when I'm editing. <laughs> okay, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So how has it been, um, you know, managing society, especially during COVID? Um, it's been really difficult, like, because we've had to adapt a lot. And we just, mm. uh, especially at the beginning of the year, we didn't really know what was going to happen and, like, what to prepare for. And we were kind of told to, like, have three separate plans. So, like, no restrictions and like full restrictions and like in between. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've been we've just been moving everything online, like all our workshops and stuff. Um, I found that we've had like not as many people attending as like if it was um, in person, um, which kind of makes sense because if you're on your laptop, you ca- it's like a choice between Netflix or like a society <laughs> thing, yeah. and it's like which one's easier. Um, but yeah. It's been quite difficult, but made it work. And like with restrictions easing a bit recently, we've been able to do things for the show, which has been really good. Oh, that's pretty cool. So like, um, could you tell me like, what are the steps to um, planning one of your shows? Like, how's that process normally go? Um, so for the fashion show, um, first thing is to like plan it, basically. So just have a list of, like everything that needs to be sorted. Um, the first thing that we kind of um, discussed was the concept mm. and uh, our vice president, um, Greta, she like really developed it. Um, and from there we were able to kind of have an idea of what we wanted for each video. So we're separating the show into four videos, yeah. which are gonna be premiered on YouTube. Um, yeah, so we kind of had an idea of what we wanted for each video. And then from there we were like, okay, which brands do we have? Which like can we assign and then yeah and then after that it was actually getting everything done so like casting models and then training the models and then doing fittings so like deciding who gets to wear who we should put in what and um obviously like shooting the videos we had to find like videographers or like people to do photography um and then like organize when we're actually going to do it and like locations and everything um, but yeah, it was really, it was a good experience anyway. Do you have to get like permissions for locations or can you just like... Um, so we just did it outside, like um, basically in public places. So oh. it was kind of okay. But in previous years, we, we've we done like a show or Myths have done a show um, at, a, like at a venue. So like one was in the Civic Centre. Last year it was supposed to be the Boiler Shop, I think it's called, or... The place where they do bongos, bingos. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we've had to like adapt to doing the show online because usually it's been in person and I feel like that's been a challenge as well, but it's been like a good learning experience for all of us, I would say. Okay. Um, what would you say the hardest part about being president has been for you this year? Um, I feel like the hardest part has been just like trying to keep everyone motivated. Um, I don't know if it's <laughs> I've done a good job of it or not, but hopefully I have. Um, but yeah, just trying to keep people motivated, especially when um, it's been all online. I feel like it's easy to just like not really care about something. Yeah. Like, yeah, because you you just don't see it in person or anything. It's just like someone's just telling you like, like what you should do <laughs> like over Messenger. And I just feel like that must be so like, so strange so <laughs> i don't don't really blame anyone and has like were there any like shocks for you coming into like this leadership role um yeah kind of the same thing i would say just um because it's quite a big team i feel like it's easy like not everyone's gonna be as motivated as everyone so yeah. it's kind of like sometimes I don't know, some things just don't get done and then you just, I don't know, you just kind of have to do it and it's just a lot of, it can be a lot of work. Um, But yeah, it's been a learning experience though. I feel like I've learned so many things that are going to be useful when I start working. Sorry, what what are you committee roles? 
Um, so we have, I think, 13 roles. So it's president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, welfare officer, which is like a new one for our uni. Um, and then we have head of fashion outreach, um, fashion show manager, modeling director, sewing director, fashion director, sorry, um, multimedia director, blogging director, and editorial director. I think that's all of them. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and does um, any of those mean anything to you? <laughs> Did you zone out? <laughs> no, I got a clue, but I can I think I kind of get it because but that's a lot of positions because most societies just have around like maybe six or seven members on the team, but you got like thirteen. Yeah, so. it's. I think it's better to have someone in charge of specific things because it's mm. hard for everyone to kind of keep track of different things. But yeah. I've seen some societies have like thirty. Thirty members. Like me. Or I had. One of the societies had maybe 20 or like 30, but it was, a, yeah, it was a big amount, but I kind of get it. Like it's so much, it must be a lot easier to have people in charge of their own thing. But at the same time, it's a lot of people to manage. Uh, and would you say, um, cause obviously, um, for a society like this, they need funding, quite a bit of funding. Does most of that come from the university or does it come from like raising the money yourself? Um, so this year we've just been like asking for like grants and stuff mainly but in previous years um i think money's been raised from like ticket sales for the show um i'm not sure about fundraisers i can't really remember anything but i'm sure that and us have done some um but yeah just fundraisers and so because i know like the university they have their own so i want to say like because the university have their own grant fund for society. So when you say you just meet asking for grants, is that university grants or um, individual grants from outside sources? Um, it's from the university. But um, part of the our society is kind of looking for outside brands to... Not brands, but organisations to kind of help us as well. Um, but we haven't um, been successful just yet. <laughs> um, but yeah. So your t your term as president is like kind of mm -hmm. coming to an end now, isn't it? Alright, so let's. I want to hear the tea still about this society. The tea, what the hell? <laughs> I want to hear like you know. So pretty much, you have to audition people for like roles such as modeling, um, stylist, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Alright, who rejects people that don't make it? What do you mean, like for like let's for say the show? Or? Yeah, for like shows. Um. I don't know if you have it. So if it's modeling, the modeling director would say, sorry, you didn't make it. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's, with like styling or like anything that we do or like if we create images or anything, like we do want to keep a certain standard. So it's either giving feedback or being like, I'm sorry, I don't think it, I don't think it works. <laughs> um, it's quite hard though, like, because you don't want to make people feel disheartened and yeah. stuff. And you do want to help them to um, and like grow and improve. Okay, so what area do you normally um like before you were president? What area did you normally participate in? Was it styling? Was it? Um. So like? before I was president, I was designer outreach. So I did do some styling for the show, which was cancelled because of COVID. Um. But yeah, I was doing like I was in charge of the relationships like outside of the university. So I was in charge of talking to brands and um, getting clothes from them, mm. looking after the clothing um, and styling it. I helped with casting, not casting, with um, fittings. Um, I went to like the rehearsals which, and I just like got to know the models and like helped there. And I kind of like, it was really, it was really nice because at fittings, like I kind of assigned everyone something mm. that's kind of suited them. And it was really nice because they could, they were like, oh, I can tell, like, you just know what, I, like, <laughs> what I would want to wear, and it was really like re rewarding. Um, but yeah, that's what I was doing before I was president. Okay. So, um, per like personally, I'm guessing you do want to pursue some sort of um, career in fashion. Um, I'm not sure anymore. For like the um, past few years, I've been like pretty certain about it, but um. Now I think I want to, maybe still in the fashion industry, but I just want to try different things. Because before I used to want to do buying, but now I don't really want to do that anymore. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to see what else I'm good at. 
So um, just to do this, what do you mean by buying? Um, so fashion buying is um, like a role in the industry. So it's the people that kind of decide what to buy to sell to people. So like any shop would have a buyer like Selfridges. They're like, OK, they go, maybe someone like the buyer goes to shows and they're like, I like this. I think this will sell well. And like they kind of like choose how many, I don't know, lot, like amount, the amount of clothing yeah. that they're going to purchase. And then, yeah, then they keep it's like a, it's a bit analytical as well. But I always thought it sounds fun and I think it still does sound fun, but I just don't want to do it anymore because um, I started thinking about like sustainability and stuff. Yeah. And it's just. I just felt like I don't want to be part of the problem. Like, I don't want to be that person that's like, that's like, oh, you need to buy clothes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> when I'm kind of like yeah. iffy about it myself. Okay, that's fair. And since your term is coming to end, if you had p- to give the next upcoming president some advice, what would you? Um, I think maybe my main advice would be to not do people's jobs for them that much like even if you feel like yeah you could do it quicker and i don't know yeah you could do it quicker um just let them do it because i feel like it's kind of like i don't know like the more you do it the more they kind of know that you will do it so they just people just don't really like they know that it will get done even if you don't do it so So if they don't really feel much responsibility so they start kind of taking you for granted yeah, not for granted, but just like they know someone will do it. Like they're not bothered or they're not worried about it because someone will do it. Ev- and even if that person has a lot of things to do already. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I was thinking about it. And it's kind of like if you like leave a mess because, you know, yeah. someone else is going to clean it anyway. It's ca- kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> but yeah. All right. So... Again, starting now. <laughs> All right. So the showcase. So the showcase is coming up. Will there be an, a theme, an exact theme for it, or like what's the theme for them? Um. So our show this year, the title is called Human Interference, and we're kind of looking at the relationship between like humanity and um, nature and like the earth, and we're kind of doing it through the four elements, which mm. is why we have four videos. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really interesting. We kind of have a narrative throughout and we hope that, um, everyone can kind of pick up on it, but yeah. And is what's it called on? Is the show open for everyone or is it just a site? Yeah. So we're going to premiere it on YouTube during the week of, so starting on the 28th, um, we're premiering it on YouTube, but, um, and yeah, and hopefully we'll have like a live chat feature and you can just chat to people because usually would, there would be an event and I feel like that like the social side is a bit fun and yeah i don't want to miss out on that <laughs> uh, on what date did you say it's on so our first one is the 28th and then the second one is on the 30th then second and then the 4th of july oh so you have like oh so each event is um is for each um element i'm guessing yeah that's pretty cool okay and um, you guys will be posting updates on your instagram page yeah yeah and um you should definitely subscribe to the youtube so you don't don't miss the show. Uh, um, I'll leave a link in for the Instagram page in the description below, as well as the YouTube channel. So you guys can tune into that. And you know, <laughs> since you heard the fashion side, how did I do today? <laughs> I think you dressed pretty nicely. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm talking about apart from the sliders. Oh, like, I didn't even see them. Apart from the sliders. Oh, no. no, I think it's pretty cool. I, okay. I like the color coordination. Thank you. Okay, that was for that one comment that said Tom can't dress. <laughs> <laughs> just that's just, that was just for you. All right, but I appreciate you coming on. Okay, thank you. Thanks for having me. No worries. Guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share with your friends. Um, follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and all major streaming platforms. Um, again, the guys won't be here for a while, so you know, you're stuck with me. <laughs> and do you have anything to plug? <laughs> Any cheeky plugs? Um, no, just the just the Fashion Society and Scrum YouTube, and we made a TikTok just recently. So oh really? Yeah. Okay. Um, would you like to do the outro? You can do the outro. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Let's <laughs>